Hello coders, I welcome you all. In this video, we are going to discuss our next machine learning project, human activity recognition with smartphones. As you can see our problem statement. The problem statement is to classify human activities based on data collected from smartphones. The activities include walking, walking upstairs, walking downstairs, sitting, standing and laying. The data set contains various features such as accelerometer and gyroscope readings from the smartphone. Our data set contains data collected from a group of 30 volunteers who performed various activities while wearing a smartphone Samsung Galaxy S2 on their waist. The smartphone was equipped with embedded inertial sensors such as an accelerometer and a gyroscope which were used to capture the movements and vibrations associated with different activities. So our data set contains 561 features which are the result of processing the accelerometer and gyroscope readings from the smartphone. There are six activities as I said which are walking, walking upstairs, walking downstairs, sitting, standing and laying. The data set contains 7352 samples for training and 2947 samples for testing. So our data set contains a large number of features. So we need to perform feature selection to reduce the number of features and improve the performance of the model. Let me show you our data set. As you can see here, currently I'm using Kaggle and this is our data set. So you can download this data set from Kaggle having two files train.csv and test.csv. You can find the link of this data set in the description of this video. So let's get started. Let's jump to Jupyter Notebook. As you can see for this project, I have mentioned some questions. So now let's solve them one by one. So let me first import pandas as PD. Let me execute this cell. As you can see now our pandas library is successfully imported. So now let's import our data set. So let me write PD dot read underscore CSV because our data set is available in CSV file format that you can see over here. So in my case data set available at this particular location. Let me assign it to one variable data is equal to this statement and let's load test data as well. So PD read underscore CSV. Let me copy this and let me paste it over here in place of this train dot CSV. We have to use test dot CSV. Let me execute this cell as you can see now our training data set and testing data set successfully loaded as pandas data frame that you can see over here. So now our next question in this question we have to display top five rows of the data set. So for that let me write data which is pointing to our training data this one and we have to use head method of pandas data frame. Let me execute this cell as you can see over here as you can see features of our data set T body accelerometer mean X T body accelerometer mean Y likewise and this is our target variable activity. So as I said there are six activities like walking walking upstairs walking downstairs sitting standing and laying that you can see over here. So we are going to predict activity based on reading of accelerometer and gyroscope that you can see over here. So this way we can display top five rows of the data set using head method of pandas data frame. So now our next question in this question we have to display last five rows of the data set. So let me write data and we have to use tail method of pandas data frame as you can see over here by this we can able to find total how many rows are available in our data set that you can see over here. 7351 that you can see over here. So this way we can display last five rows of the data set using tail method of pandas data frame that you can see over here. Now our next question in this question we have to find shape of our data set like number of rows and number of columns available in our data set. So for that we have to use shape attribute of pandas data frame. Let me execute this cell as you can see over here output is Python tuple. This is at index zero and this is at index one. Also, we can display it in proper format using print function number of rows data dot shape zero print number of columns data dot shape one. Let me execute this cell as you can see over here total. We are having this many rows and this many columns available in our data set that you can see over here. So this way we can find shape of our data set like number of rows and number of columns available in our data set using this shape attribute of pandas data frame. So now our next question in this question we have to find duplicate values. So first let's find rows with the same values. So for that we have to write data dot duplicated dot any as you can see here output is false means there is a no any duplicated row 
in our data set that you can see over here so now let's find columns with the same values so for that let me write data which is pointing to our training data this one let's transpose our data frame and let me use dot duplicated so let's find columns with duplicated values and let's convert this to python list and let me assign it to one variable duplicated underscore columns is equal to this statement let me execute this cell let me check let me copy and paste it over here let me execute this cell as you can see over here our data set contains this many columns with same values let me find the length of this list let me execute this cell as you can see over here our data set contains this many columns with the same values that you can see over here so now let's remove columns with the same values so let me write data dot drop and let me pass this columns having duplicated values and here we have to set access to one and to modify our existing data frame let me assign back let me execute this cell as you can see here we have successfully dropped duplicated columns that you can see over here now let me check shape of our data set as you can see over here the previous shape was this one after removing duplicated columns this is the shape of our data set that you can see over here so this way we can find duplicated rows and this way we can find duplicated columns if it is there in our data set that you can see over here so now our next question in this question we have to find the missing values so let me write data and we have to use is null method of pandas data frame let me execute this cell as you can see here output is pandas data frame with boolean values that you can see over here now let's find sum of true values using this sum function let me execute this cell as you can see here output is 0 0 and 0 that means there is no any missing value in our data set that you can see over here so this way we can check for missing values that you can see over here now let's check distribution of our target variable so let me write data and our target column is activity let me execute this cell as you can see over here so let's use count plot let me execute this cell so let me import shibon as sns let me execute this cell as you can see now our shibon library is successfully imported now let's execute this cell once again as you can see over here as you can see some overlapping so for that let me import matplotlib.pyplot as plt let me execute this cell once again and here let me write plt dot x sticks and rotation equal to 45 let me execute this cell let me change it to 35 and to remove this extra information let me write plt dot show let me execute this cell once again as you can see over here by looking at this count plot we can say that our data set is balanced as you can see over here almost same number of samples available in each category that you can see over here so we can say our data set is balanced data set so now our next question in this question we are going to store our feature matrix in x and response also called as a target or dependent variable in vector y so for that let me write data dot drop let's drop our target column activity and we have to set access to one and let me assign it to one variable x now let's store our target also called as dependent variable in vector y let me execute this cell let me check as you can see over here our independent variables that we have stored in matrix x let me check y our dependent variable as you can see over here and this way we can store our target variable in vector y that you can see over here as you can see here our target variable contains string values but our machine learning algorithms can understand only numerical values so let's encode our target column activity so for that let me import from sklearn dot preprocessing let me import label encoder and let me create instance of this label encoder as le and let me write le dot fit underscore transform and let me pass y over here let me assign back let me execute this cell let me check as you can see over here so this way we can apply label encoder that you can see over here now our string values are converted into numerical values that you can see over here so now our next question in this question we are going to split our data set into the training set and the testing set to evaluate the performance of our machine learning models so for that let me import from sklearn dot model underscore selection let me import train underscore test underscore split let me execute this cell as you can see here we have successfully imported our train test split module now let me write train underscore test underscore split 
and here we have to pass our independent variables and our dependent variable and let me set phase to size to 0.20 so we are going to keep aside 20% data for testing purpose and let me set random state to 40 you can use any other number as well and let me assign it to x underscore train x underscore test y underscore train and y underscore test is equal to this statement let me execute this cell as you can see here now our data set is divided into four parts into two set one for training and one for testing so we are going to train our machine learning model on x train and y train and we will test our model on unseen samples available in x test and we will compare predicted values by our model with y underscore test so this way we can split our data set into the training set and the testing set to evaluate the performance of our machine learning model that you can see over here as you can see our target variable is categorical so this is classification problem actually it is multi-class classification problem right because our target variable contains more than two classes that you can see over here so we are going to use classification models logistic regression and random forest so let's first check accuracy of logistic regression and random forest before applying feature selection so let me import from sklearn dot linear underscore model let me import logistic regression from sklearn dot matrix let me import accuracy score let me execute this cell now let me create instance of logistic regression as a log and let's train our model logistic regression on our training set on x train and y train let me execute this cell please ignore this warning now our logistic regression is successfully trained on our training set on x train and y train now let's perform prediction using our unseen samples available inside x underscore test and let me assign it to one variable y pred one is equal to this statement let's find accuracy score of logistic regression so here we have to pass actual values which is available in y underscore test and predicted values by our model available inside y underscore pred one let me execute this cell as you can see here logistic regression is 98 percent accurate on this data set that you can see over here now let's use our next algorithm random forest classifier so for that let me import from sklearn dot ensemble let me import random forest classifier now let me create instance of random forest classifier as rf now let's train our random forest classifier on our training set on x train and y train let me execute this cell it will take some time we have to wait as you can see here now our random forest classifier is successfully trained on our training set now let's perform prediction using unseen samples available inside x underscore test so let me write rf dot predict x underscore test and let me assign it to one variable y pred 2 is equal to this statement let's find accuracy score of random forest so here we have to pass actual values available inside y underscore test and predicted values by our model available inside y underscore pred 2 let me execute this cell as you can see here random forest accuracy is higher as compared to logistic regression that you can see over here 98.02 and 98.23 percent so we can say our random forest classifier is 98.23 percent accurate on this data set that you can see over here so as you know our data set contains this many columns so we have to perform feature selection so before we discuss feature selection let's first discuss what is a feature so as you can see a feature is an attribute or characteristics of a data set that is used as input in a machine learning process the features in a data set are also called its dimensions so data set having n features is called an n dimensional data set so let me take this data set insurance cost prediction data set so these are our independent variables so independent variables are called as features and this is our dependent also called as a target or response variable so please remember our independent variables are called as features so how many dimensions are available in this particular data set one two three four five and six so this is six dimensional data set because this data set contains six features so as i said features also known as independent variables are the attributes or characteristics of the data that provide information for making predictions or classifications they are used as input 
to the machine learning model features independent variables contribute to predict the target variable which is also called as dependent variable the target variable itself is not considered as a feature hope all of you are clear with what is a feature so now what is feature selection so feature selection is the process of choosing the most important and useful features from a data set it is done to improve the performance efficiency and interpretability of machine learning models so why feature selection is important first better model performance selecting relevant features helps the model to capture important patterns and relationships in the data leading to more accurate predictions second overfitting prevention including irrelevant or redundant features in a model can lead to overfitting feature selection helps to remove such features reducing the complexity of the model and preventing it from memorizing noise in the training data next we are using feature selection to enhance interpretability so with fewer features the resulting model becomes simpler and easier to interpret it allows humans to gain insights into the relationships between the selected features and the target variable leading to better understanding and decision making next faster computation working with fewer features reduces the computational resources required to train and use the model this is especially important when dealing with large data sets feature selection also improve generalization so by selecting the most relevant features the model becomes more robust and can make accurate predictions on new unseen data so that's why we are performing feature selection to better model performance overfitting prevention enhance interpretability faster computation and improve generalization that's why we are using feature selection so now let's discuss feature selection techniques first filter based second wrapper methods and third embedded methods there is also fourth one called as hybrid methods which combine two feature selection methods that's why it is called as hybrid methods there are many filter based feature selection techniques like variance threshold correlation analysis chi square test anova analysis of variance or f test select k base mutual information etc these are filter based feature selection techniques now let's discuss wrapper methods first recursive feature elimination rfe second forward selection backward elimination exhaustive feature selection so these are some of the wrapper methods for feature selection now embedded methods like decision tree based feature importance random forest based feature importance gradient boosting based feature importance so these are some embedded methods so in this project first we will apply filter based method this one select k best after that we will apply recursive feature elimination rfe on the selected features from select k best in short we are going to use hybrid method combination of filter based techniques and wrapper methods now let's discuss these methods one by one first filter based feature selection so in the filter based method we choose a subset of features by using statistical measures to evaluate their usefulness here we do not rely on machine learning algorithms to determine the quality of the selected features instead we look at the data itself and use statistical techniques to assess the merits of each feature this approach helps us to identify the most relevant features without involving the complex machine learning algorithms in short filter based feature selection is a method in machine learning that selects the most informative features independently without rely on machine learning algorithms to determine the quality of the selected features here we are not using any machine learning algorithms based on statistical measures it selects the top ranked features for the model training so there are many filter based methods right we are going to use select k best now wrapper based method so in the wrapper based method we use an induction algorithm as a black box to identify the best feature selection here the feature selection algorithm incorporates the induction algorithm as a part of its evaluation function this means that for each candidate subset of features the learning algorithm is trained and its results are evaluated as a result the wrapper method can be computationally expensive because it requires running the learning algorithm multiple times so please remember wrapper methods first perform subset generation as an example f1 f2 and y this is our first subset f2 f3 and y y is our dependent variable 
and here f1 f2 f3 are independent variables so this is our first subset and this is our second subset as i said wrapper methods first perform subset generation like this in second step it runs machine learning algorithms on this subsets after that we are selecting subsets with higher accuracy score or with higher r2 score as per the problem classification or regression so this way we are using wrapper method so please remember in the wrapper based method we use an induction algorithm as a black box to identify the best feature selection now embedded method so the embedded approach is similar to the wrapper approach in that it is also uses an induction algorithm to evaluate feature subsets however the main difference is that the embedded approach performs feature selection and classification simultaneously so this is the difference between embedded method and wrapper method now hybrid method the hybrid approach combines the strengths of both filter and wrapper approaches to feature selection so in a typical hybrid algorithm statistical tests from the filter approach are used to determine the base subsets of the feature for a number of features then a learning algorithm is employed to select the base subset among these subsets of different sizes so in this project we are going to use hybrid method so let me show you some tools that i have created to explain you the concept of filter based feature selection and wrapper methods so as you know there are many filter based feature selection method in this project we are going to use select k best so for that i have created a very simple tool just to explain you the concept of select k best let me run this cell as you can see over here these circles represent features feature 1 to feature 10 so as i said filter based feature selection is a method in machine learning that selects the most informative features independently based on statistical measures it selects the top rank features for model training let's select three top rank features using select k best let me press this button select features as you can see here filter based feature selection is running so it applies statistical measures independently on each and every features that you can see over here at the end as per the given input three most important features are selected that you can see over here feature 4 feature 5 and feature 8 so this way filter based feature selection works that you can see over here so as i said there are many wrapper methods we are going to use rfe recursive feature elimination and here i have created very simple tool to explain you the concept of rfe recursive feature elimination let me run this code as you can see this ui i have created using tk inter here circle represents features so let me enter three we want three top ranked features let me press this select features so as we discussed here in background one machine learning algorithm is running and giving ranking as per their importance so as you can see here as per our input top three features are selected as per their given ranking as you can see over here rank 1 rank 2 and rank 3 and feature number 1 2 and 10 that you can see over here and here we have used rfe recursive feature elimination so please remember rfe recursive feature elimination is a feature selection technique in machine learning that iteratively eliminates less relevant features to improve model performance based on their importance rankings obtained from the chosen machine learning algorithms that you can see over here so let's jump to jupyter notebook let me show you this practically as you can see here feature selection so first we will apply filter based method as i said there are many filter based methods we are going to use select k best so using select k best we will select 200 features after that we will apply wrapper method as i said there are many wrapper methods we will use rfe recursive feature elimination we will apply this rfe on our previously selected features these 200 features and we will select top ranked 100 features using this 100 features we will train our machine learning algorithms and after that we will check accuracy of this particular model that we have trained on this 100 selected features by rfe so let's get started so let's first use filter based methods and from that we are going to use select k best so for that we have to import from sklearn dot feature underscore selection and let me import select 
k best and also let me import f underscore class if here we are using f underscore class if because we are solving classification problem as you can see here currently i am on scikit-learn.org you can see here sklearn dot feature underscore selection dot select k best as you can see here these many parameters we can pass to this particular method select k best as you can see here score underscore function so by default is f underscore class if as you can see function taking two arrays x and y and returning a pair of arrays scores and p values or a single array with scores as you can see here default is f underscore class if the default function only works with classification task as i said right and here we can pass k as integer value number of top features to select so that's why here as core function we have used f underscore class if because we are solving classification task that you can see over here f underscore class if let me execute this cell so as i said first we are going to select 200 features out of 542 features so k is equal to 200 let me use select k best as you know we are solving classification task so that's why here we are using f underscore class if which is by default and let me set k value to k means 200 this one let me assign it to one variable selector is equal to this statement you can use any other name as well and let me write selector dot fit underscore transform and let me pass our training set x train and y train and let me assign it to one variable x underscore train underscore selected is equal to this statement also let's do the same for our testing set as well so selector dot transform our x test our unseen samples so let's get the indices of the selected features so for that we have to write selector dot get underscore support and let me write indices is equal to true and let me assign it to one variable selected underscore indices is equal to this statement now let's get the names of the selected features so let me write x train dot columns and let me pass this indices and let me assign it to selected underscore features is equal to this statement let me display names of the selected features let me copy this let me paste it over here let me run this code as you can see over here these are our selected features from select k best as you can see here length is equal to 200 also we can use length function over here as you can see here 200 so we have selected 200 features with help of filter based method using select k best now let's use wrapper method as i said there are many wrapper methods we are going to use rfe recursive feature elimination as you can see here currently i am on sklearn.org here you can see sklearn.feature underscore selection dot rfe recursive feature elimination that you can see over here so here we have to pass estimator means machine learning algorithm that you can see here estimator a supervised learning estimator with a fit method that provides information about feature importance for example coefficient underscore feature underscore importance underscore that you can see over here and here also we can pass n underscore features to select that you can see over here n underscore features to select here we are going to pass integer value the number of features to select so as i said from 200 features selected by select k best from that 200 features we are going to select 100 features with help of rfe so for that let me import from sklearn dot feature underscore selection let me import rfe from sklearn dot ensemble let me import random forest classifier let me execute this cell as you can see here now our required libraries are successfully imported so let's create instance of random forest classifier you are wondering why we are using random forest classifier as you can see here we found accuracy of logistic regression and random forest classifier before applying feature selection from this accuracy we can say that random forest classifier is the best algorithm for this data set so that's why here we are using estimator as random forest classifier let me create instance of random forest classifier st meter is equal to this statement let me execute this code let me set k is equal to 100 and let me use rfe and here as you know we have to pass estimator so let me copy and paste it over here which is random forest classifier in this case that you can see over here estimator a supervised learning estimator with a fit method that provides information about feature importance and let me pass n underscore features 
underscore two underscore select the number of features to select so we are going to select 100 features from previously selected features by select k best that you can see over here from this 200 we are going to select 100 features using rfe recursive feature elimination and let me create instance of rfe underscore selector is equal to this statement and rfe underscore selector dot fit underscore transform and here we have to pass at underscore train underscore selected this one selected features by select k best and y underscore train and let me assign it to one variable x train underscore selected underscore rfe is equal to this statement let me apply this to our testing set this one let me copy this and let me paste it over here and let me assign it to x underscore test underscore selected underscore rfe is equal to this statement so now let's get the indices of the selected features from rfe so for that let me copy this instance paste it over here dot get underscore support and let me set indices to true and let me assign it to one variable selected underscore indices underscore rfe is equal to this statement so let's get the names of the selected features from rfe so let me write selected underscore features and let me copy this and let me paste it over here so this selected underscore features which is this one from that we are getting selected underscore indices by rfe let me assign it to one variable selected underscore features underscore rfe is equal to this statement now let's print the selected feature names from rfe so let me write print and let me copy this let me paste it over here let me execute this cell as you can see here name error ref underscore selector rfe underscore selector let me execute this cell once again so it will take some time we have to wait as you can see here these are our 100 features selected by rfe that you can see over here so let me write print and let me use length function let me execute this cell as you can see here 100 so these are our 100 features selected by rfe that you can see over here so actually our data set contains these many features after removing duplicated columns these many features are remaining 542 on this 542 we applied select k best and we have selected 200 features using select k best at the end using rfe we have selected 100 features from our previously selected features by select k best as you can see output is 100 100 selected features by rfe now let's train our random forest classifier on this 100 selected features by rfe we have already imported random forest so let me create instance of random forest classifier let me execute this cell now let's train this random forest classifier on selected features by rfe this one let me copy this let me paste it over here and y underscore train let me execute this cell it will take some time we have to wait as you can see now our random forest classifier is successfully trained on 100 selected features by rfe now let's perform prediction on our test data let me copy and paste it over here let me assign it to one variable rf is equal to this statement let me execute this cell now let's find the accuracy of random forest classifier for that let me import from sklearn dot matrix let me import accuracy score let me execute this cell accuracy score actual values and predicted values by our model random forest classifier let me execute this cell as you can see here accuracy after future selection as you can see here our random forest classifier is 98 percent accurate on this data set after feature selection as you can see here before selection accuracy was 98 percent and here almost 98 percent that you can see over here accuracy with and without feature selection almost same so this is the advantage of using feature selection that you can see over here now let's save our random forest classifier so again and again training is not required and we can perform prediction using this saved model so let me first import joblib let me execute this cell as you can see here now our joblib library is successfully imported now let's save our random forest classifier let me give name model underscore rfe you can give any other name let me execute this cell as you can see here now our random forest classifier is successfully saved so we can perform prediction using this saved model now let's save the select k base object to a file so we not required to perform feature selection 
using select k best again and again so let me write joblib dot dump let me use selector and let me give k best underscore selector you can give any other name let me execute this cell as you can see we have successfully saved the select k based object to a file now let's save the rfe object to a file so again let me write joblib dot dump r f e underscore selector and let me give name r f e underscore selector let me execute this cell as you can see here now our r f e object is successfully saved to a file so we not required to perform feature selection again and again we can use these files for feature selection this is select k based and this is r f e file now let's perform prediction using this saved files on our test file this one that we have downloaded from kegel so let me write data underscore test dot drop we are going to drop dependent variable which is present in our test file and let me assign it to one variable data underscore test is equal to this statement let me execute this cell also we have to remove duplicated columns so let me write data underscore test dot columns data underscore test dot transpose dot duplicated to underscore list and duplicated underscore columns is equal to this statement let me execute this cell as you can see here we have successfully stored our duplicated columns into this particular variable now let's remove the columns with the same values means duplicated columns so let me write data underscore test dot drop let me copy this and let me paste it over here and let me set access to one and let me assign back let me execute this cell as you can see here we have successfully dropped duplicated columns from our test data now let's perform prediction using our saved model that we have saved over here with name model underscore rfe so now let's load our saved model so we have to write joblib dot load let me copy this name and let me paste it over here and let me assign it to one variable model is equal to this statement let me execute this set as you can see our saved model is successfully loaded now let's load the select k based object from the file this one so let me copy and let me write joblib dot load and let me assign it to one variable selector is equal to this statement let me execute this cell so we have successfully loaded the select k based object from the file that you can see over here now let's load the rfe object from the file that we have stored with this name rfe underscore selector let me copy this and let me write joblib dot load let me paste this file name and let me assign selector rfe underscore selector is equal to this statement let me execute this cell as you can see we have successfully loaded rfe object from a file now let's transform the new data using the loaded select k based object so let me write selector dot transform our test data so here first we are applying select k based this one and let me assign it to one variable selector is equal to this statement let me execute this cell now let's transform the new data using the loaded rfe object so let me write rfe underscore selector this one dot transform and this 200 features selected by select k based and let me assign it to one variable x underscore test underscore selected using rfe is equal to this statement let me execute this cell now let's perform prediction using our saved model on the features selected by rfe so using this so let me write model dot predict and let me pass selected features by rfe let me execute this cell as you can see over here predicted values by our saved model so this way we can perform prediction on test data that you can see over here as you can see here gui for this project that i have created exactly same way as i have created for our previous projects so let me execute this cell as you can see here our gui for this project user can perform prediction using this gui let me click on this let me select this test file that i have downloaded from kegel let me press this button open as you can see over here let me give predicted underscore file i am going to save on my desktop as you can see here file saved successfully let me show you the file that i have just saved as you can see here this is our saved file and this is predicted target the values are predicted by our model so these values are predicted by our saved model that you can see over here so this way user can perform prediction using our created gui that you can see over here hope you like this video please don't forget to subscribe this channel if you like this video smash that like button 
थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर वॉचिंग दिस वीडियो टेक केयर बाय सी यू इन द नेक्स्ट वीडियो